game against Malmo with Thomas Tuchel. If you would like a question today, please use the raise hand feature on Zoom. The yellow hand will try and get round to as many of you as we can. It will be one question each, and we'll begin with Nizar Kinsella. Of course. Hi, Thomas. I just wanted to ask you about um, Kai Havertz. You know, he's um, he's been the, the big winner of the Champions League last season, getting that goal and that big moment. Um, how have you felt in this season? Because it, it's it's kind of felt like he's not quite got to that real top level that we kind of hoped after that big goal. Yeah, that's a fact. And uh, he does everything to reach his level again. And we do everything to help him. And he is an important player of our squad. And it will be like this in a moment. It's, uh, he had many games to start with. He started strong in the season. He was very strong in pre-season. The story has not changed. But uh, he lacked the is as simple as that. He lacks the statistics of decisive things, of goals and assists, and he needs to fight. Uh, he needs to fight his way back in, into the team when he gets minutes, and, and this can happen any time. We, we trust in him and we believe in him, and uh, the rest uh, the rest has to come from him. And, and he's willing to do so. He's in a, he's in a good shape. He's in, in a good mental state. He knows what he's fighting for. And that's uh, the situation right now. Jacob Steinberg. Hi, Thomas. Hi. The back three that you brought in when, when you came to Chelsea has obviously worked really well, made the team really difficult to, um, to score against. Um, we have seen some problems in the attack in the last couple of weeks. Do you, do you feel that with some kind of kind fixtures coming up in the next few weeks, is there the possibility of thinking about changing the formation, having a look at different systems that might make it easier for some of the attacking players? Yes, yes and no. We are always thinking about it. But is it really a tactical is it really a tactical thing? And and uh, is it like is it um, does it have less value that we are a difficult team to play against than, than being a team that scores always easy uh, three goals? Who scores always easy? I mean do we do? Is this the right step to take? This is the question. Of course, we can take this step when, when we are fully convinced, and when is the moment um, to put more offensive players? But this is also about balance. This this uh, this game is about balance, and we found the balance. And um, and uh, the main point is that we we stay active no matter no matter what structure we play, and the guys. Um, and the guys um, help each other on the field and I think that we can create chances in any kind of structure but yeah of course we think about everything but you have to find uh, the right moment because like um, like I said so uh, there are always a lot there are also a lot of reasons why to stay in our structure and increase the, and increase and improve the behavior within the structure because I think it's the most important how we play it that we stay active and aggressive you can also score from counter attacks, from ball wins, and um, this is it's not only about creating uh, creating chances against the uh, opponent who's defending deep, and a lot of teams are defending deep in the moment against us. It's maybe the most difficult. So we're looking for solutions. That's why we are here. One solution could be, like you said, to change formation, put more offensive players. Let's see. Peter Bagelman. Hi Thomas, Hi. Um, I have more of a general question if you don't mind. I was wondering about your relationship to Sweden and Swedish football. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a tricky question, but mm -hmm. if there's anything you can share, then that I would be happy. I remember, I remember a very nice holiday in, in Stockholm mm -hmm. uh, for, for three, four days. It was beautiful with a bike in the city and a beautiful hotel, beautiful beautiful city, it was a very, very um, relaxing, relaxing holidays and very inspiring uh, city, very open-minded people that uh, we met there. So yeah, and in general Scandinavian, uh, Scandinavian uh, um, style of living and Scandinavian style of, 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 of thinking outside the box is, is very impressive and this is something that you feel also in the approach in sport. So when you play Danish teams, when you play Swedish teams, 
uh, you, you, you feel that they are confident and that they, they are not shy of trying new ways to, to, um, to, 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 to reach their, their personal best level. So this is always inspiring and uh, much more I cannot share. You know, of course, we are well prepared to play against the Malmö tomorrow and we are well prepared and we prepared already our team to our opponent because we, we, they deserve full respect and of course we show all the respect to everybody who plays against us and uh, yeah, this is pretty much it. Victoria Beckman. Uh, yes, hi. Um, hi. What potential threat do you see in uh, Malmö? I think in general they are a, a team which plays with a lot of confidence in their own style and um, they, they trust in what they are doing. They are maybe not used to the, 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 this highest level, that's why they maybe struggled a little bit in the beginning of the group phase, because the league in, in Sweden is not the same level like Champions League, but still they, are, they, are, um, they have a certain style and they trust their style and I feel them very confident uh, within that. So. Um, we should absolutely not underestimate it, and uh, we should we should uh, we should respect them like we respect uh, any team, and and um, turn it around and, and, and be on our top level. Um, it's a it's a very successful coach. It's a very successful coach as a player. They are individually good, and then like I said, it's a, it's a team that trusts their own style and uh, can hurt you any minute if you're not awake. Paul Gilmore. Hey Thomas, um, since, since winning the Champions League, you've obviously added Romelu Lukaku. I was just going to ask you, do you think the, the players are, are still uh, adjusting to having a, a player like that in the team? And is there anything more you can do from a tactical point of view just to, to get the best out of him on a consistent basis? This will increase every day because yeah, we are in the process of, of adapting to each other. Um, I think in the, in the very moment, it's my opinion, I feel Romelu a bit like... Um, um, Bit like overplayed. I think he played too many competitions uh, over the summer, with uh, too, um, too many competitions with national team. Now he played the, the, the Nations League, and you know he is a fantastic um, athlete and uh, um, um, such a competitive guy that he wants. He digs in deep and he wants to win these things. He never takes them easy, and in churches games he wants to be out there and win. So I know how much. He wanted to have a good outcome for a European Championship with Belgium and in the opposite line. And then now again in Nations League, this was a huge match for him personally. It meant a lot to him, it means a lot to him to play for his country. So he takes it really serious. If that does not work well, he always puts it on his shoulders. He thinks about it, he reflects about it. And I feel him a bit tired, mentally tired. Not like hugely that we have a concern, but he's not like, he does, for me, he does not like fully enjoy like uh, um, uh, without having second thoughts and third thoughts. I mean, for me, he's overplayed a little bit and, and uh, this is the, the, the key point and he will find his, once he finds his rhythm and once he finds things a bit easier, but it's difficult. To, um, to judge, do we need? To, does he really need a break, or is it better to keep him on the pitch? And next national break is coming, but um, this is what I feel particularly for him. Some other players too. For me, it's the same. A bit like with Mason and and Shorshi. they struggle. They they have they have a lot of um, weight to carry for their countries, and they take it and they love it, and they are competitors. And if you like it or not, if you play a thousand matches <laughs> a year, it, it becomes a bit like, yeah, it can feel heavy. Although they love the game and they are such good guys, but this is what I feel between the lines. Really. Andy Dillon. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good? Good. Good, good. Um, I, I know we only have one question today, and I do, I do have a question, a uh, pointed question for you, but... If I may just as well ask about team news, I know we always like to kind of find out about the housekeeping, who's fit, who's, who's not pleased, if that mm -hmm. might be, and then I'll ask you another question after that. Please. That's an easy one, it's only Christian Pulisic who's missing tomorrow. Okay, thank you. 
Um, now, I, I was interested last week when you were talking about your players being nominated for the Ballon d'Or, and you said you had absolutely no idea which Chelsea players were nominated, and you're not interested in individual awards. So I wonder if you might just, what have you actually, what have you done with your UA for Coach of the Year award then? Where is it? And, and okay. what do you think would be, you don't, you don't know where it is? Yeah, I don't have a room for this and that it, it's not in my office that everybody sees it when you come in and I don't have a room for this it's at home. I love my work and I love my work on an everyday basis and that does not change if I get a, a, a trophy or not a trophy. I'm very grateful that, that I got it. It's, uh, it's still it's, it's unbelievable, almost unbelievable to, to, to have this. But um, I, I will not change my opinion on this. This is my right to have my opinion and I have my opinion on this. Okay, last two, Moose and then Matt Moore to finish. Moose. Hi, Thomas. Hi. 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 Um, a little bit off, off the back of what you said earlier, your, your players may be on play exactly at their best. And is that because they're playing too much football right now? I mean, we've got the World Cup in, in 15 months' time. Yeah. You've got to fit every other competition in. Do you think the players will not seeing the best of them in the Premier League right now because they're playing too much football? From our players? Yeah. yeah, I think we lack a little bit of form um, and we lack a bit of enthusiasm in the last percent, yes, and I think it, uh, one big reason is that we play too much. Not we as a, as a club, but the, the players play too much. And um, I'm, I'm a big friend of quality and not quantity, so and this is what, what, what's the situation right now. And, um, it's what we are facing, but this is nothing new and the next national break is coming and uh, it's coming soon and it will not change. In the opposite, we will have in January or February, we will have uh, another competition to, to, to play in. And then things can, can look sometimes uh, a, bit, a bit stiff or like a, a bit harder than it, than it should be. But don't forget, I mean, uh, we're talking about Premier League and, and uh, the Premier League is the toughest league in, in the world. So there is also no shame in, 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 um, in, in having a tight match at, at Brentford. And there is absolutely no shame that you need a late winner against Southampton. It is what it is. And it is very important that we don't feel, um, that we don't feel ashamed and we don't are too critic with ourselves. It is what it is. And if you have hard moments, you fight through the hard moments. We wanted to be um, a team that nobody likes to play against and we are on a good way and we are on a good way and from there we try to improve. Will it ever feel easy that we win our games? I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure if it feels uh, easy for any team in Premier League uh, to win any game, uh, let it be at home or, or away game. So maybe it's normal and you have to embrace the situation that it's, that it's difficult at the moment. In the moment we find our ways to win the games, there's still room to improve. I, I agree with everybody, but, but we lack a bit of form, we lack a bit of freshness, we lack a bit of joy. And, and uh, for me, the, the key reason is not the mentality, is not the attitude, is, is nothing else but, but what you said. We are coming from travels, we are coming from planes. I mean, if you think about yourself, I mean, if you if you travel through time zones and and you you are in a hotel and 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 then you and and you change the hotel and and you know it's easy said and then you are one one day at home and see your family and then you go back to the hotel and then uh, you play at Brentford and then as the next one is Champions League, it can it can be tiring, can be tiring and and uh, I, I I can only repeat it I. I'm, I'm a big, big friend of, of quality and the quality players need to be in shape because the spectators want to see the best players in the best shape. And this is uh, simply too much football and too many different competitions. Last question, Matt Law. Hi, Thomas. Hi. Um, I appreciate coaches don't usually like going into detail on injuries. Um, but, but Christian Pulisic has been has missed a lot of games already this season, and I know supporters are, are quite worried about what what's happening with him. I just wondered whether you could give us any detail on what what his problem is, whether he's had a setback, when we might see him, because it just seems every week Christian's out, Christian's out, yeah. and I for one don't really know what's wrong with him. I've got to be honest. 
Well, he got injured during a match with with uh, USA and uh, was a, was a foul was a was a was a tough foul and he 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 hurt his ankle. There is nothing to worry in, in, in terms of that we are hiding uh, details or we're not telling you details. I cannot give you all the details because I'm simply not a doctor, because, but in the moment he has some setbacks from pain, not from major injury or not from complication. It's simply the pain in, in the ankle that disturbs him. And once these players with these quick movements like, like Christian, once they, they feel this pain and are not free in the movement, it, it's, it's, uh, the recovery is not happening. So you start all over again and you start all over again and you reach a certain point and then the pain comes back and you have to do a little pause and then you start all over again. So right now we are very, very close. He was already like so close to come to team training last week and had a little setback and a little reaction by pain. Nothing, nothing serious, but serious pain. Um, and from there on we go. Uh, I, he is very impatient, of course, and he does everything and, and we can see him suffer in every meeting and, and uh, every time we meet him here in our training center, he's really suffering. He wants to be on the pitch and help us and uh, everybody's doing its, its very best, but unfortunately the, the, um, the injury takes its time. Okay, we'll leave it there. Stay online, please, for Reese Jackson.